something this big doesn't not change you. That came largely from the mental strength that I've, I've gained, I guess. So yeah, this, this is a pretty special one, guys. Welcome back to the channel. I sat down with Ben and we really talked through the last 12 months that he has gone through. Obviously, this starts with a crash. So if the specifics of the crash don't interest you, the gory details, you wanna skip over that, please do. It's maybe the first two minutes of this. But from there on, this vlog goes well, I didn't know where it would go, but I'm so happy it went to this place. We talk about the mental struggles. We talk about some of the techniques he has used to overcome it mentally and physically. And essentially there's some tips in here for, for not only recovering from injuries, but just your own physical and mental performance. This is clearly and easily one of the most enjoyable vlogs I've sat down and made. I really hope you enjoy it as much. Without further ado, I, I give you Ben Carmen. Tell us about that day. So it's basically a year ago. Um, what do you remember of the day, specifically like the race, like, and the crash? Like what, what do you remember? I was feeling amazing, you know, full of confidence after my win the day before. Um, I knew the first time up the climb, sort of we, we did a climb pretty early on in the race. Um, I knew I was on for a good day. You know, everything seemed to be like it was just going going perfectly. And then, yeah, the crash happened that fast that I didn't even know what I'd hit until after I'd hit it. Um, but, yeah, I was just a unfortunately placed motorbike uh, on the course. But yeah, like I, I knew it was, it was a pretty bad injury straight away. And then from that point on, like whilst I remember it, it was essentially just getting pumped full of painkillers while I was on the side of the road. I remember it well, but there's not a lot to remember because I wasn't wasn't conscious for, for most of what happened. All right, well, let's quickly just do this. Cover the specs. Give me the spec sheet. What did you do to yourself? The minor injury was I um, broke my kneecap, um, sort of just split it in half. Um, they say broken, but I essentially exploded my, my tibia because the, the sort of top part of your shin, sort of just below the knee, um, was you know three to four um pieces and it's it wasn't just a clean break um because it was sort of that like shattered nature um it's it's quite difficult to put it back together and then for it to heal properly the noise is dying down you're you're starting to get into the the day-to-day -day of well the rehab what did what did a week look like for you at this point that's there's sort of two parts to that question and um i'll i'll sort of the, the first part was fortunate, f fortunately, f fortunately for me, um, the, the noise from the crash didn't die down in the sense that, um, I have a pretty amazing, uh, support network around me. Um, and, and not just my, you know, immediate friends and family riders on the team. Um, and you know, my community more broadly sort of never really let me sit out on my own um post crash you know it's 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 easy to be there and support someone for the first you know two weeks post crash but um yeah that support sort of never really died away from pretty much four weeks post crash uh rehab began and it was all about getting my knee moving again because the in the short term i couldn't bend my knee at all like it was in a complete straight position and i just had no ability to bend it so rehab was all focused about getting that movement back basically learning to walk again. Was there anything in that first phase, like a mindset or something that you think helped get through that, that period, that hardest period? I love that question. Um, Cause there's, I'd say there's two, um, two answers to that, that made it so much easier for me because one is that you can, is a mindset that you can implement sort of post crash and that's very much, it's it's easy to say, but it is hard to do. And that's learning to enjoy the process. Whilst my goal was to get back to a functional leg, if you approach it with like, I want to have a functional leg and everything I'm doing is just like towards this goal, um, you're going to get beaten down every step along the way because, you know, 
every single day that you can't walk is a bad day when when your goal is to walk whereas if you yeah i know what you're saying yeah learn to enjoy the process of this is a challenge to overcome so like the progress you get from the day-to-day rehab the second part i would say is something that i firmly believe everyone needs to have in their life day-to-day regardless of injury crash um and that and that sort of stems from a combination of a lot of things um you know early on in my career and life and that was like i'd i'd struggled with mental health there for a while um and creating a sense of balance in your life where you know my identity isn't attached to one thing you know yes i'm a cyclist but i'm not only a cyclist and um you know having that support network around me in and sort of within and without the the cycling community and you know having things like university to focus on i've got my coaching career to focus on i've got just other hobbies outside of cycling um you know that's why there's a stack of books in the shelf behind me um you know to just have that balance in your life so that when a crash comes in and just decimates the cycling part of my life that it hasn't necessarily decimated me as a person yeah that's an awesome answer because you know, I don't want to go too much into into your history as such in in this, but like you have, you have raced, you've raced in Europe, and I know that you suffered some some setbacks when you did that. For those who don't know, I did six years of, no, seven years of um, like of racing in Europe, um, and you know, in various locations and teams, but. There are there is like there are a tremendous amount of setbacks from, you know, living that full time cyclist life in Europe. Um, and I, I wouldn't say there's one singular setback that that sort of really prepared me, but the the collection of them all. Like I've broken, like I've broken a collarbone while living in some dingy apartment in France, and basically had to go through the whole recovery rehab process almost entirely isolated. Um, and that sort of set me up in a lot of ways because knowing that I needed to, you know, having your support network is one thing, but actually using it when you need to, instead of the old, you know, like I'm a tough guy. I I don't, I don't need help, um, approach. I work quite extensively with a sports psychologist. Um, and I'm a massive advocate for everyone working with a psychologist of some sort, whether they're, you know, mentally healthy or not a big part of that is putting things in place before the crash or before any setback in life right um so that you when you have a setback it's more of just a process you're going through like you know what you need to do you have all these safeguards set in place so yeah when the hard days come they're they're not so hard you're not a professional bike rider you're not paid by neurocontinental to ride your bike from from Last time I checked, is that correct? No, ben? not that I'm aware no, of. Sorry. You're oh. sending the money to the wrong person if, if I am. <laughs> so why? Like, you know, why do you want to get back to racing your bike? I have spoken to a few people in before doing this, and they all and they were there that day, right? They're all there that day. And they all said to me, that is the first day, or the only day that they all – considered never racing a bike again from what they saw and they weren't you uh the short answer is because i love it um like and it it kind of i guess quite lamely ties into that enjoying the process answer is because i just have a genuine passion for cycling and just trying to be at my you know physical best um and I also just love yeah, going out for a six hour ride and you know, just staring at the birds kind of thing for six hours. Um Is it can I ask, is it the passion of bike racing or is it the passion of bike riding? It's a combination of the both. And that's that's kind of what I was sort of building into is that for me there was no doubt that I was going to at least try my best to be back riding my bike. But I guess the ultimate thing that made me realize I I do want to race was that at no point did I lose the passion for racing and the desire to race. It was more stemming from, I just don't want to do this again. 
in all honesty, I'm still not sure what that means for my, you know, future career, whether I'm a bit more picky and choosy with the races I do. One of the biggest high points I would say was last weekend, like winning the Darren Smith crit as my, you know, second state open back was... If you come back stronger, there's going to be question marks, like massive question marks. What was in that stuff they were giving you in the helicopter? That's what I want to know. I, but I actually think like, I've actually been doing a lot of like, for those who don't know, I'm studying psychology and massively interested in sports psychology. Um, And I've actually been doing a lot of like psychological testing with um, some of the, the sports psychologists at uni. Um, and you know, things like going out and seeing what different, like how different techniques affect my power output and, and times, like how, how quick I'm riding up climbs and, and, and et cetera, and that sort of thing. So when you say different techniques, you, you talking about different mindset techniques. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. and I, right now I'm not physically as strong as I used to be, but mentally, like I'd say hundred percent way stronger. Like from this experience wow. as a total, um, like I'm definitely like it, it definitely like something this big doesn't not change you. Um, and yeah, I'd say like even what happened on the weekend, like that came largely from the mental strength that I've I've gained. I guess there's the title for the vlog: "The Crash Made Me Stronger." So let's let's hang on, let's play with that for a second. Because I was going to ask you, like, has this changed your relationship to pain? So obviously it has. No, like when you're lying in bed and just in like astounding amounts of pain every night and you can't do anything about it. Like that's, I know that's so different to the pain of climbing up a mountain and that kind of thing. Like it did, I had to learn to learning to just accept, like it sounds so cheesy, but learning to accept it and not like there's this on, constant ongoing battle with pain that we quite often have, like, like as you would know, like let's say you're doing a time trial, it's literally you just doing this with the pain. Like, can I go harder? No, I can't. Like, how do I overcome this? And it's like this opponent you're just fighting with the whole time. Whereas now it's like, it's it's essentially trying to change the relationship from that to it's just an annoying TV in the background. Oh god. Where yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I don't like it, but you know, I've just got to accept it and. Are you enjoying it? Is is that what you're trying to achieve? No, like it's 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 more about making it insignificant. So like enjoying it also places too much uh, emphasis on pain. Like it's, and that's why I like that analogy because it's 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 more about just making trying to make it this annoying background noise that's just irrelevant to the task at hand. What's the next couple of months look like for you? Like how's your mindset racing wise? Um, I'm all in for nationals. Um, like I, so cliche. <laughs> oh God. It is, but I, I genuinely hated, like if we're talking about one of the lo- like genuine low points through the injury was sitting there watching nationals unfold from the couch. I like it. I, I, I'll be honest. I, I cried watching that race cause like I just hated not being there and being a part of it. I'm not, I, I'm not the kind of person who sits there and going, Oh, I would have won, you know, if I was there, but just knowing I had the ability to at least have an impact on the race. Like I would have made, I feel like I would have made whoever won hurt that little bit more in the process. And like, that's, that's all I want to do. Um, and I love how that's, that's your gauge of success now. It's not like winning a race. It's like making other people hurt more to have to win. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I just got to make them earn it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like I, I've just so, so like that's been the light at the end of the tunnel for me is, yeah, the doctors set no time frame for me, but I set a time frame for me and that was, it was always like, I want to be back for nationals. Alrighty, mate. Um, absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, do you want to give the podcast a quick shout before we go? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're putting episodes up fairly regularly um, these days on Project Cycling and um, delving into any and every topic we can think of. But um, we, we are going to talk um, 
quite extensively about motivation in the next episode. So that's if this episode int- oh, this episode in- intrigued your interest, then um, certainly tune into that one. Mm-hmm.